Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this getting started tutorial for thermal simulation using ANSYS Discovery. If you recall, in part one we completed the setup of our simulation and it's ready to be initiated. But before starting our simulation, let's set an average temperature monitor on the ribs. To do this, triple click on the ribs to select the body, then click on the hex to bring up the halo, then select the monitor icon, click on it, and here in the drop down menu, we can select temperature. And on the right here, you can see the options that you have for temperature. You can have a minimum temperature, a maximum temperature, or an average. Let's leave it at average and confirm by clicking on the check mark. On the upper right of your screen, you can see that we have a new monitor together with the default monitor of max temperature. We can rename this average ribs temperature um, by right clicking on this, selecting rename and writing average temperature ribs. And by pressing enter, you confirm the renaming. You can see here that we also have a plot of the average temperature of the ribs. This way you can track the variation of average temperature for each design variation that you run. Let's exit the head up display view by pressing escape twice. The next step is to start the simulation. This can be done by navigating to the bottom right corner of your screen and clicking on the green solve button. As you can see, the simulation starts immediately since we're in explore mode using our GPU for calculation. This means that we get close to real time results. In the bottom middle section of the screen, you can find the SID or what we refer to as the simulation information display. If you hover over it, you can see what type of physics we're solving and on which bodies. These are highlighted in purple. A green line appears around the SID to show us the simulation progress. But since we are in explore mode and we have near to instantaneous results, the green bar rotates around the SID very fast. Below the SID, we have our fidelity slide bar. By sliding the bar to the right or to the left, you can change this fidelity. Sliding it to the right will essentially decrease the mesh size and therefore increase fidelity. And if you slide it to the left, you're going to coarsen your mesh. To preview mesh size, go to the simulations tab and press on size preview. Here you can zoom in and have a look at how big the automatic mesh is. Please note that the mesh size depends on your GPU memory. So it could be that your mesh size is different from mine. We can zoom back out to have a look at our results. Looking at the temperatures, we can see that our average rib temperature is roughly 55 degrees Celsius. Let's deactivate size preview and then activate the visibility of the case and the antennas. Here you can see that part of the ribs is actually cutting through the casing. In the current design, they are too high and we need to therefore lower them. So let's deactivate again the visibility of the case and the antennas. Then go to the side view by clicking on the Y axis in the bottom left corner. Then we can box select the top surfaces of our ribs. Navigate to design and click on move. Click on this blue axis to define which direction we want to move these surfaces in. 
And then by clicking and sliding downwards with your mouse, we can reduce this size by roughly 10 millimeters. You can see that the calculation started again instantaneously. This is because we left the solve button on from before. Now we have our new results and can enable again the casing and antenna visibility. We can then set the case surfaces to transparent by triple clicking on the case surface and navigating to the bottom left side of the screen and clicking on this icon. Then clicking again somewhere on the screen will show us that our casing is now transparent so we can see inside the router a bit better. We can also go ahead and dismiss the head-up display by pressing escape. I'd like for you to also note that the new average rib temperature is higher than before and roughly 63 degrees Celsius. This is marked on the same plot as before so you can track the difference in temperature between the two different designs. Before we conclude this tutorial, I'd like to show you how easy it is to add an additional physics to this simulation. In this case, let's run a thermal mechanical calculation. First, let's press on the pause button so any modification we make does not prompt an immediate recalculation from discovery. Then, let's disable case and antenna visibility. We can also deactivate the temperature contour visibility by clicking on this icon. The next step is to define fixed supports. And we can set these on these four cylindrical faces on the PCB. You can select these by holding down the control button and clicking uh, with your mouse. Once you've selected these four cylindrical faces on the PCB, go to your hex, open up the halo, go to the mechanical boundary conditions and select support. This brings up the structural support head up display and we can leave this as fixed and confirm by pressing the check mark. You will note that there's a new boundary condition in the physics tree and also the symbols in the SID are now different. We have a mechanical and thermal logo and if you hover over the SID you see that we're calculating a thermal mechanical simulation. We can dismiss the HUD by pressing escape twice and then we can click on solve and see our real-time results appear. Here you will note that on top of temperature we now have variables coming from the mechanical side of the calculation such as displacement and different stresses. You can adjust the color bar by clicking on it and sliding down or up. You can also put an exact value to your liking. For example, in this case, we can type 66 and confirm by pressing enter on the keyboard. This concludes part two of the Getting Started Thermal Tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoy ANSYS Discovery.